Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and today I want to share with you my budget backpacking gear list. Now, I've done a lot of backpacking gear list videos over the years. Most of them with the emphasis on lightweight. What I haven't done before, though, is one with the emphasis on low cost. And I'm surprised I haven't done this before, because looking back at my own history, I know one of the things that was most prohibitive to me getting enthusiastic about backpacking was the cost aspect and just the overwhelmingness, for lack of a better term, of picking out gear. A little background on how I came to do this video today. I was not planning to do this at all. I was putting together some gear for a trip I'm about to do, and I'm gonna film a backpacking trip video. Everything you're about to see is stuff that I've used over the years. Some longer than others. I've been backpacking. I got the backpacking bug like six years ago, going on seven or so. Some of it inexpensive gear, other stuff is DIY, make it yourself gear, which we'll see, except for one item, and that is the sleeping bag, which I know is very important, but to be honest, the reason I'm taking this sleeping bag is because it's a better version of the budget sleeping bag that I originally bought uh, back six years ago or so. And I was going out to do a trip to test this sleeping bag. But I started thinking as I was going through, I was like, this sleeping bag is only like 30 bucks. And then my shelter, well, we'll get to that in a second. That's pretty inexpensive too. I wonder if I can just cobble together with all the gear I've amassed over the years, a low budget, cost conscious, if you will, uh, backpacking gear list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through everything. I even made up a little gear list right here on paper. You can download that. You can go in my video description and uh, there's links for that. Now I do have it in PDF format uh, for you to check out as I usually do. I did create it on lighterpack.com. So shout out to them. What I'm going to do this time is provide that link. So check it out in the video description there. Nice thing about that is not only does it have all the weights listed so you can see a total of the weights, but they also have a function that I didn't realize till recently for price so you can see the total price for each category and then on top of that they have the ability to link gear so to make it easy for you guys because this is all about cost if you want a specific price just click on that link and you can actually see what the real price is going for right now but that's what we're going to do we're going to move through this and i'm going to show you everything and then kind of tell you my experiences about it now Another note as well, you may notice by looking at the timestamp on this video, uh, yeah, it's not the shortest video in the world, right? Well, I'm going to put it to you like this uh, as a little example. I'm assuming you're watching this video because you are interested in going backpacking for the first time, most likely, like myself six years ago. You're trying to figure out what gear to buy and how not to beat your wallet up too much or... On the flip side, you might be another person that I'm gearing this video towards, and that is the person that's trying to convince their friend to go backpacking. So watch this video for tips or just give them a link to this video and uh, maybe you can convince them to go with you. That being said, pretend you're the person going for the first time and pretend that I'm your friend. I'm your new friend, okay? Virtually on the internet. And you call me up and you say, hey, Syntax, Sean, since we're on a first name basis. Sean, I'm uh, looking to go backpacking for the first time. I know that you go a lot. I'm thinking maybe is it cool if I come over maybe sometime and pick your brain? And I say, yeah, sure. Uh, Tuesday night sounds good. Come on over and we'll talk. And you show up and we sit down and we start talking and about 10 minutes of light warm-up conversation in, you go, whoa, 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 hold up. It's been 10 minutes, buddy. What's all this? Too long. And you walk out. I would probably question how serious you are about going backpacking. Just saying. So <laughs> what we're going to do right now is kind of hang out together, me and you, and we're just gonna have a little conversation and go through all this gear. If you're down with that, let's go. So first things first, I'm thinking, just to maybe let you see the actual pack, let's start with the sleeping pad right here. And yes, it's a pad. If you're familiar with the channel, you might be confused right now because you know my preference. We'll get there. This is a sleeping pad that I happen to pick up from Walmart. 
or you can go on Amazon, etc. It's just a foam sleeping pad. It is a half inch thick. Keep that in mind. This one is 25 inches across. And I got it for 15 bucks at Walmart. Like I said, there's like 10 to $20 versions on Amazon, etc. I'm gonna take the little things off here that it comes with. And it rolls out. It's about six feet long and 25 inches across. This one in particular, you can get them for as low as like mm, seven bucks at Walmart. The blue ones, I'm sure you've seen them. This one, A, is supposedly antimicrobial, so that's cool. And it's 25 inches, which a lot of pads are 20 inches. Some, watch out, are even 19 inches with. I'm doing an upcoming trip where I'm sleeping on the ground because I'm testing that sleeping bag. So the extra five inches of width was important to me. That being said, I've used 20 inch wide pads before and they're fine. And that's what most of them are. So don't be scared of those, but just know before you buy something impulsively, there is a difference in width and definitely thickness on these. I wouldn't go below a half inch for sure. And I wouldn't go below 20 inches wide, but that's what I got for this pad. Now I want to point something out real quick. And as I go through the video, there's going to be times where like this, where I point out maybe where you could, if you want to, depending on your preferences and what's important to you, push it a little further with the uh, budget. When I first started backpacking, I was nervous about spending money because I didn't know if I would ever do this again. I mean, I don't know about you. Maybe you're watching this because you're gung ho about doing it from the gate, but I had a friend invite me on a backpacking trip. I think that happens to a lot of people. So like you're down to do it, but at the same time, you're like, I don't even know if I really am going to like this to the extent that I do it again. So you got to kind of balance buying gear that's going to work for this trip versus, you know, you don't want to have to buy stuff twice. What if you get really into backpacking and it turns out that, you know, you wanted something a little better. So I want to point out, when you look at sleeping pads, the first thing you're going to see most likely is the Thermarest kind of $100 model. It's that Thermarest Pro, I think. It self-inflates. That's like ubiquitous. It's like the first thing everybody goes to, it seems, when they backpack. When, when I did my first trip, there was four of us. All three other people bought that Thermarest $100 guy. Again, I was cheap and paranoid, so I didn't want to spend that much. And I got this $40 Thermarest Z-Lite accordion style pad. At the time, I still thought I was paying a decent amount of money, and I was, it was 40 bucks. But that being said, this thing I've been using for six going on seven years, and I love it to death. This is not just awesome for sleeping on the ground by itself, but it's also great for supplemental insulation on deep winter trips, which is a little beyond what we're talking about right now. But just know that for an extra 25 bucks, you could have a pad that if you continue backpacking, I promise you, or I, I would say high guarantee, you're gonna use for the rest of your backpacking career. Just keep that in mind. So there's the $15 version, the $10 version, and the 40. But on the list, I have the $15 version. That's the sleeping pad. I wanna point out, everything on this gear list totals less than 250 bucks with one caveat, I'm going to get to the sleep shelter and some of you are going to freak out. I know I would have when I was newer. Don't worry, I'm going to provide some options besides what I'm doing. Uh, two different options for a little bit extra money to make things a little more uh, comfortable for you. But that being said, if you look at the base weight on this list, it's 13-ish pounds. 13.4 is what I have right now as a working number. General consensus, 15 pounds and under is considered lightweight and the coveted ultralight is under 10 pounds. We're only three pounds above ultralight and I didn't do that on purpose. It's just because I created a budget backpacking list uh, because you don't bring a lot of crap you don't need. That's the main way to get ultralight. Uh, so I just wanna point that out because there is, um, it's a subject for another video, but. I'm going to call it a myth out there, a misconception that ultralight backpacking is super expensive and it's just not true.
but I'll save that for another video. But as you can see, half the battle is not bringing crap you don't need. And uh, hopefully I'm gonna spare you from buying a bunch of stuff you don't need as we go through this video. But don't be afraid to bring comfort items that work for you that can be very worth it as well, psychologically. All right, so let's get in here. Let's point out something very important. The backpack itself, that is a major purchase, right? When I first bought a backpack way back yonder, my friends got, I think they all got Gregory's, which are nice packs. It's like the Cadillac of backpacks, but they push up on like $300, like the high 200s. I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. So compared to that, I felt cheap and I bought a $180 EMS pack and I still have it to this day as my winter pack. I've beaten the crap out of it. It's still going strong, good investment, but still that's 180 bucks and uh, that's almost as much as my entire gear list, right? So this right here is by a brand called Scandinavian Gear and it is $55 roughly. I've had this for about a year. I tested it out for them. It works great. Not only that, but another expense, right, when you first start backpacking, is a rain cover. A lot of people are surprised by that. What, it's not already waterproof? I have to buy another piece of gear to keep the rain out? Well, yeah, for the most part, you do, except for some very high-end kind of um, specific use backpacks that are basically like dry bags. Yeah, you need a rain cover. They can cost, like a Sea to Summit rain cover can be... 40 to $50 by itself, it's crazy. This guy is $55 and it comes with an integrated rain cover, which is tucked into the bottom. So there's a savings instantly right there that you don't have to uh, spend money on. If you didn't get a pack with an integrated rain cover, I would say still steer clear of Sea to Summit. They're good and robust, but they're expensive. Just uh, my recommendation would be Dutch Rug Gear, link in the video description. They have a $20-ish rain cover that not only works just fine for half the cost, but it's half the weight, which is cool too. But anyway, this one's integrated, so you don't have to worry about that. Now looking at the side pockets, a little bit of a uh, con for this bag is it has very short mesh side pockets, but if you use the clips on the side to secure your water bottle like this, then it's really not a huge problem. So I have water bottle options here. It's up to you. Sometimes I carry just this. It is a one and a half liter disposable water bottle, right? Pretty simple. You can buy it for a dollar because you're drinking water and then you just keep the bottle and that's it. One and a half liters. For most trips, that's actually plenty of water depending on where your water sources are and where you're going. There you go. And on top of being super cheap, it's really light. This thing is like an ounce or less. Uh, let's see. So, of course, most people assume you have to have the classic Nalgene, right? And these bottles are awesome. This is a one liter Nalgene, little duct tape around it for utility. It's got the screw on top. Yeah, these are great under certain circumstances. But for fair weather backpacking, three season, non-freezing temps, I'll be honest with you, overkill. Not needed. Not at all. It's just not, in my experience. I think this works just fine. Now, in advantage of this, you can pour hot, hot water, almost boiling water into this and it won't deform. That's cool, but again, that's something I wouldn't do unless I was winter backpacking and we're not talking about that right now. This right here would melt if you did that, but just don't pour boiling hot water in it and you're fine and you don't have to spend money on an algae. Down the road, you're excited about backpacking, you wanna go winter backpacking, great, bring one of these. But even then, I would say, don't even bother with an algae still. I have become a big proponent of 40 Below. There are more flexible water bottle, and these are actually required on more hardcore ascents for say like, uh, I don't know, Everest, Denali, I think for sure, in Alaska. Um, but anyway, that's another subject, but I would say, don't spend money on water bottles, just get disposable. Another option, it's really popular. I will unclip the other side here, pull it out of the pocket, Gatorade. So next time you get Gatorade, don't throw the bottle out. These are, they weigh a little more. We're still talking a fraction of an ounce, but they're more rigid and uh, still won't hold up to <laughs> boiling water and whatnot, but you can beat them up a little more. 
both of these, even if it does get cold at night and it freezes, they will expand. They won't crack and split in my experience. Pretty nice. All right, let's keep it going. Let's get the top out of the way. So the top of this guy zips open and right there, this right here is a rain jacket. Actually came as part of a set of rain parka, if you will, and pants. And that's really the only way to buy this. It's by Dry Ducks or Frog Togs. They're kind of interchangeable. I think they're the same people, but search Frog Togs or use my link. And it's a parka. Now, it's ultra light, which is cool because I like low weight. And for the set of pants and suit, it's only 18 bucks, roughly 20 or less. Yes, if you are not careful and you walk through some deep brush and you snag this, I did tear one of these once. It was still like five years ago. This one's five years old. So they're not super resilient, but again, I've made this one last a while. And because it's thin, it is super lightweight. It has a material inside that wicks away sweat, so it still breathes and yet repels water. So here's your rain jacket if it rains. But even if there isn't rain in the forecast, I still would recommend bringing this, which let's see the stats. 5.75 ounces just for the jacket. So under six ounces for this guy right here. It can be cold in the morning or cold at night, depending how late you're staying up doing chores, hanging out with your friends, whatever. Add a little wind in, it gets real chilly even in the summer, depending where you are and where you're going. This right here, don't think of it as just a rain jacket. I use this often as a windbreaker and just overall parka to keep my heat in and on me with my layers. So this is a great asset for warmth as well. And I do wanna point out that everything I'm doing here is three season fair weather backpacking. So we're not anticipating going below the 50s or so, right? All right, cool. So that's that. Anything else in the top? No. Let's look at the bottom because that's going to bring up shelter, which is important. And I said some of you would be scared away. And uh, don't worry. Hang with me. I'm going to explain. Options, etc. So when I open this up here, what do I have? It's a big old, no frills, 8x10, basically trucker tarp. Now this one's a little fancier. It's got a camo print, but picture a blue tarp that you would cover the back of a truck bed with. This was like 10-ish dollars. It's an eight by 10 tarp. I know. I was packing for a trip where I had to ground sleep with a sleeping bag. My normal go-to, and we'll talk about it in a minute, is hammock camping, which can be very lightweight and cost efficient as well. But I was testing this sleeping bag, or at least I'm going to be testing this sleeping bag on the upcoming video. So that requires sleeping on the ground. And I haven't done a tent in years and I like to cut weight. So I just said, hey, I'm bringing this tarp right here, which weighs 31.25 ounces. So just a little under two pounds. Yeah, that's a lot, but not compared to a tent, which we'll get into. So for around two pounds and 10 bucks, you can have a tarp set up. And then you also need some guy lines, which I have for my other tarps. It's a Zingit line, but linked in the video. For like 13 bucks, you can get 100 foot of guy line, which I'm gonna tie to all four corners of this and each end of it. So I can make like an A-frame kind of structure that I'll show in that video. I don't even need two trees, just one tree to tie to and then pitch the other one into the ground and make an A-frame. If that's hard to visualize, just uh, stay tuned for the trip video that goes along with this one. Hey everybody, Syntax77 from the future here. Just wanna pop in real quick to make a little point. Another great way to set up a tarp that requires no trees at all is to simply use your hiking poles. You would really only need one for a lot of configurations. That's a whole nother subject. Speaking of other subjects to kind of get into, but not too deep, you may also notice as you go through this video, I do not have on my list or in my pack a set of hiking poles. This is a topic that I've gone over on several videos, so you can please feel free to check those out. I won't go into it too deep right now. I will just say this. I am a proponent of hiking poles. They can be very useful for people depending on their needs. Check it out. Look into it. Personally, I don't use them on fair weather trips. I do 
use them on deep winter trips for snowshoeing. There's just no way around it. But personally, the reason I don't carry them is because I'm filming and using my hands all the time. So I've just gotten into the mode of not carrying them. But do keep that in mind. Hiking poles do not have to be expensive. I have ones that are really expensive because they're ultra light, but I also have other ones. Just check out my video description. I actually picked out a pair that's around 20 bucks for the full pair and you can use those. So just something to keep in mind on hiking poles if that is important to you. I have aluminum tent spikes, nothing fancy. I have titanium ones over there that I bought that are like five bucks a piece. But honestly, you can get like 10 of these for 10 bucks or something like that. All right, back to the vid. But that will be my shelter under which I'll have a sleeping pad and the bag you're about to see. I know <laughs> if you told me that when I first started backpacking, I'd be like, heck no. And maybe some of you are on board because it is light and cheap and minimalist. But I know that's going to scare some people away. So check it out in the video description. I also have some links for under or around a hundred bucks or so. So we're talking right now, we're at $250 all in to do this by yourself. For around 350 bucks, I got some ideas down there or suggestions for how to do either tent or hammock. That being said, if you're going out, I would say it's probably rare, the person watching this, that you're going out solo for the first time. You're probably gonna go on a trip with a friend who's asked you to go or is dragging you to go, depending on your um, outlook. So hopefully they already have a tent and you can just say, hey, I'm sleeping in your tent with you and you don't have to worry about buying a tent right now. Or perhaps maybe you are going on a solo trip for the first time, in which case your mentality is probably a little more hardcore and you might not be above doing a tarp thing, which I would highly suggest thinking about because it's not a whole lot different than uh, just being in a tent other than maybe some bugs getting at your face but depending where you're going not a big deal but let's say that it's not an option or it's two of you you and a significant other or a friend that are both getting started for the first time and there's no tent involved all right first tent i got was a kelty salita 2 it's a two-person kelty tent for you beginners out there just know any tent when they say the rating of how many people can fit in it, that is like a best case, like sleeping only scenario. So a two person tent is honestly like, in my opinion, a one person tent comfortably. Yes, I've slept in my Kelty Salita too with my wife and it was fine, but you're literally side by side, like you're not moving. So if we want some space, we would get a three person. But that being said, if it's just you or you and a friend, you can get by on a two person tent. The Kelty Salita I just mentioned, I really like it, but it's 180 bucks because you're paying for lighter weight materials. It's around three and a half pounds or something like that. For four and a half pounds, there's the one I linked below. I think it's the Kelty Venture. Basically, it looks like the Salita, but made out of some slightly heavier grade materials. And it runs around four and a half pounds and it's 70 bucks. Not bad. So for $70, you can get yourself a whole tent. I would suggest that because I do like Kelty. I've had experience with them. I bought that tent like s almost seven years ago and it worked well. So check that out. And then also there is a Coleman Sundome two-person tent that's like 40 bucks-ish. There's a link down there below as well. That's pretty cool. If you really want to do a non-tarp thing, I don't blame you at first. For 40 bucks, you can do that, but just keep in mind... There's really good ratings on that tent, but it's like seven and a quarter pounds. So that's a lot considering our whole base weight so far, which is everything not including like food and water. That's what base weight is. Our whole base weight is like 13 pounds for this system. So you'd be pushing up on 20 pounds if you added that, but you'd have an actual tent that you could zip down and keep the bugs away and stuff like that. On the flip side, if you're thinking that, if you know that you're going to stick with backpacking, I don't think you're going to want to keep using that $40 seven pound tent. Unless you expect to go car camping, which is a whole nother animal. But if you do go ahead and buy that heavy tent, slug it for now. And then in the future, retire it for car camping. But I would say maybe save up, put the extra money into the, the Kelty, at least the Kelty Venture at four and a half pounds. And if you really want to invest, maybe the uh, Kelty Salita, which is three and a half pounds, but we're talking 170, 180 bucks at that point. 
My main suggestion though, if you want to spend like a hundred extra dollars, go hammock. I love hammocks. There's tons of videos on this channel. I won't go too deep on it, but just know I'll put links down there as well. Go to Dutchware gear and there's a couple options. Personally, I would go with a Dutchware half wit hammock. It is 90 ish. It's under a hundred bucks. Put it that way for the hammock body itself. It's very minimal. It just has a bug net that drapes over the top of you. And then you could buy suspension, just webbing straps, which I'll link as well, uh, for like 15 bucks. So you're talking $115 to $70, and you could have either a tent or a hammock system. And then if you don't want to be that minimalist, uh, I still recommend Dutchware for hammocks. They have, uh, what is it, Flipping the Bird, and also the Chameleon. Just check them out. There's other options out there for hammocks. Now, I'm not going to get into it now, but the ideal situation for hammock camping is under quilts, but don't worry about that right now. Just buy the hammock and use your pad that you already own. And that works just fine, along with your sleeping bag in the hammock. I did that for years, it worked just great. But let's erase all that for right now, because the trip I'm gonna do is with just this tarp. And trust me, it's not as bad as it sounds, because we're gonna put the tarp up, that'll keep the rain off of us, as well as block wind. And then we're gonna have this piece of Tyvek. This is a six foot long piece of Tyvek and three foot wide. Now you can buy Tyvek on Amazon, much like all my Amazon links, but I would say, speaking of Dutchware gear, they sell it by the foot, so you don't have to buy more than you need, which is going to save you money. And for about six bucks or 90 cents a foot or something, you can buy as much as you want. So six -ish dollars, you can get this. And this will be my ground cloth. And I'll put this underneath of me and spread it out on the ground. And then on top of that, I'll put my sleeping pad, right? And then my sleeping bag, which we're about to see. And I'll be good to go. That sums up the bottom compartment, which on this Scandinavian gear bag is a separate compartment here. But if I unzip this, you can turn it into one big compartment. But I kind of like keeping things separate. All right. So now we're going to finally get into the main body of the bag. And then we'll go into the side pockets for some smaller gear. But let's open it up. Do that drawstring. So what do I have first in here? Ah. Okay. First thing I have, this looks like a shopping bag. Because it is. What's inside here? My backpacking food. Now, this video is not about backpacking food. I have a separate video on that, which I'll link above. Kind of carb heavy, but that's basically how it is for most average backpackers. Nowadays, I also do a ketogenic diet, but I cycle on and off. So sometimes I hike like you're going to see in that food video with a lot of carbs. And sometimes I don't, which I'll have to create a new video soon about how to go backpacking on keto. But anyway, food is another subject. But just as an example, I have some stuff from Packet Gourmet, which I love. This is dehydrated food. All you do is add boiling water if you're completely new to backpacking. One that you've probably seen before is Mountain House. The shelf life on these is like multiple years, like five years or something, right? Best by January 2047. Yes, 2047. Holy God. Is that real? They're pretty good. A lot of it for me is probably nostalgia because they remind me of my early backpacking trips. But I still like them, especially like chili mac and beef and whatnot. Now, if you know you're gonna go backpacking on a regular or right away, a tastier, more natural tasting thing would be packet gourmet, but these only last about six months instead of uh, 40 years apparently. But these taste more like real food, they're good. There's also some other brands out there like Backpacker Pantry, Alpine Air, which is kind of new to the game, etc. right? What I usually do is I just put all my food like you just saw in a uh, shopping bag from the supermarket keeps it all together. It's at the top of my pack, so if I need something, I can go in and get it. Snacks, I'll keep in my pockets as I go. But that keeps it organized. Then when I get to camp, we're gonna look at my bear bag. Well, let's talk about bear bag system right now. I got some line in there, which you'll see, but all I do is take this and tie it in a knot and put it on my bear bag line. It's water resistant, right? Put it up in the tree, you're good to go. For a couple night trip, no big deal. If you're doing a whole Appalachian Trail, maybe you want to buy a more substantial bag. When we first started backpacking, we bought this crazy, or Mike, 
my friend bought this crazy hardcore huge bag as like a bear bag. But in retrospect, it was like something you would take rafting. It was like a dry bag. It was serious. Not only was it probably expensive, but it was really heavy. For most trips, just out in the woods, no big deal, a couple nights, this is gonna work fine. Next level, a little more resilient because you know you can poke some holes in this, especially with these dehydrated sharp edges on these bags. I just bring a uh, 13 gallon kitchen bag, garbage bag, and you can use this as your bear bag and haul it up in the tree. So that works, that's food. All right, let's get in here. Now we're getting to clothing items. I'm gonna talk about this briefly, but those of you playing the home game, looking at the gear list slash price list will realize I put a list of clothing in the pack but there's no prices and there's a reason for that I'm going to get into right now. I'm also not going to go too deep on clothing because I have a separate video on clothing. So to keep this video moving along, check that out. I'll link it above. It's all about clothing. I talk about all kinds of backpacking clothing options. But right now we'll talk a little bit about it and you can check that one out for more depth, if you will. Now, the reason there isn't prices, well, look, you can go out and buy some fancy backpacking gear specifically for backpacking like uh, cargo pants and all this fancy stuff, right? But my thinking on this is this. Really, you don't need specific backpacking clothes to go backpacking. Any type of, I'm big on synthetics, so don't bring anything like cotton or like ideally not like denim or stuff like that. But I would assume if you're thinking about doing a backpacking trip, you're probably the type of person that might already own some athletic gear. And even if you're not the type of person to use it athletically, a lot of us just have athletic type clothes anyway. All you really need, as you'll see, is synthetic like workout shirts. Really cheap. If you don't have them, get them on Amazon or go to Target, buy Champion brand, Walmart, whatever you want to do. Just synthetic t-shirt, right? You don't need like a super fancy thing. I mean, it's great. They have really fun stuff at REI, but like all you need is a synthetic workout t-shirt. Anything meant for the gym is going to work fine in the woods for three season mild relaxed stuff. If we're talking winter trips, which I've done, that's a whole nother ball game. You can watch my videos on that, but we're not talking about that right now, right? So the other thing would be like, and again, everything in the pack is not what I'm wearing. It is my spare clothes. So I'm gonna hike in one pair of clothes and you're more than welcome, especially in warm weather, to hike in some gym shorts or just uh, if you find a pair of pants that you like that is synthetic, although it's a little more rare than shorts, but go for it. This I would switch into around camp to be comfortable and sleep in. And then the next day I would probably switch back into my dirtier hiking clothes, or if it's the last day, then I'll just hike out in these. So just regular old gym shorts to sleep in is fine with the shirt that I would have a spare of in the backpack, as well as one worn. If you're really hardcore and you know it's not gonna be life-threatening conditions, I've gone out on trips where I don't have any spare clothes, which cuts my weight down. Uh, and I just sleep in the same thing I hiked in. but. You know, that's a little more hardcore. It's up to you. Depending on the weather, um, if you're somewhere, you'd be surprised how cold it can get in the morning, even in the summer. So these are just some Merino glove liners. You might not need these. That's why I didn't price them out. But if you think it's going to be a little chilly, like below 50 in the morning, and you have some gloves, just grab them and bring them with you. These are really thin, and they take chill off in the morning. Same thing with a hat. Just a regular old ski-style hat but just bring something like this if you think it's going to be below 50 in the morning or the night. Um, it'll add a lot of warmth. It's also nice to sleep in. It will keep your body temperature higher. Then, of course, there's socks. Now, you can buy traditional hiking socks. These are great. I love these. These are uh, darn tough, I believe, or are they smart wool? But they are a merino wool blend, a medium type sock, and they're high, and that's great. Merino wool, Wool in general is great, but that being said, they're like 15 bucks a piece. Might not seem a lot to somebody who's been backpacking, but for somebody new like myself years ago, I was like, $15 for one pair of socks? No way. I pay less than that for a six pack of socks, and that's fine. 
Kind of going back to what I said, in the warmer months, three season, especially summer, you could just wear some regular old athletic socks and you might already have those, which is the reason that I didn't price them in. Otherwise, just get some sort of synthetic active wear sock and you'll be fine. Now, you're also probably thinking boots. Yes, boots are traditional for backpacking and if you already have a pair great if you don't i guess you'll have to buy some if you need or want some but keep this in mind usually you need those full boots for either really rugged terrain okay which i don't know you might be going to or because you have a lot of weight on your back which a beginner backpack almost always is way too heavy but that's because they bought a bunch of crap they didn't need this gear list is pared down pretty well. It's only 13 pounds or three pounds above ultralight. Ultralight backpacking, general consensus is you don't need boots. And I found that to be true myself as well. I don't wear big old hiking boots anymore. I bought a pair and they were nice years ago, but then I switched to when I got my weight down, which is how this pack is, to trail runners. And trail runners for the uninitiated are basically just kind of stout rigid sneakers running shoes really you can get a pair probably on sale locally pretty cheap so check that out and you may already have a pair so that's why i didn't include that but if you are really concerned about ankle protection etc i understand that especially as a new hiker so you might want to buy some boots but that's kind of open-ended just keep in mind that you might be able to get away with just some decent sneakers on the trail if you follow my advice and do a light load like this synthetic underwear of course oh that's a uh that's carol she's a voodoo doll i don't know how she ended up in there but you don't need to pack that. I probably wouldn't recommend packing that. So moving on, we're getting into cookware. This right here is my cook set. This is just about 100% DIY, okay? Years ago when I got started in backpacking, kind of like a lot of you out here, as I've alluded to, I went with a friend. And now that I think about it, what stove did we use? I don't even remember. I know I didn't buy one. So you're probably going with a friend that has a stove. That's what I did. If not, perhaps it's just you solo or you're with a friend who hasn't bought a stove either and you can't mooch off of their stove capabilities. This right here is my cook set. Now, there's the lid. So I'm gonna talk about this in a second. This is optional, you don't necessarily need that. This right here, you see I had a little elastic band on there. You can do a rubber band, whatever holds the lid in place. All this is, and I have a separate video on this, so I'll link that and you can check it out for more details so I won't waste time here, but DIY Cookpot, 32 ounce can, picture canned goods. Uh, ideally get one without the lining inside, the plastic lining like the BPA. Um, get one that's nice and silver. And well, like I said, watch that video for how to make it, but this is basically free and it weighs less than a lot of those uh, expensive titanium pots and inside is all my cookware. So that's it right there. Now it's black because I spray painted it with some heat resistant paint that you would use for like a barbecue grill or an engine. Uh, again, that's in my videos as well. Check those out. But that's all there is to it. And this is all you really need to heat up water to rehydrate your backpacking meal. That's all you're doing. You're not like cooking a, a roast out there or doing some stir fry teriyaki. You're just boiling water. It's all you need to do. Very simple. It is like three and a half ounces. Again, like I said, you could get a titanium cook pot. I have one, but they're like 40 bucks. This is virtually free. The lid is just, well, the lid you cut off of it and I hammered through a thumbtack. And there you go, easy lift for the lid and you're just going to boil your water in there so how do you boil your water though right i mean you have to buy a fancy stove for that no you don't this again once again not only cheap but lightweight two birds one stone the fancy feast cat can stove this is an alcohol stove all i did to make this was get a can of cat food and i punched holes in it kind of two rows in an offset pattern. You can look up videos on all the ways to do this, but it's pretty simple. You take a cat can and punch holes in it. And then you take denatured alcohol 
which I have right here. Got it from uh, Home Depot. This same can, oh God, how much is this? This is one gallon. I would imagine it cost 10-ish bucks years ago. Now granted, I use all different fuel systems, but this, it's a lot of uses. So it's very cost efficient in terms of fuel and all you do, it's a whole nother subject. So check out those other videos, but you just pour a little bit in here of alcohol and you light it on fire. And then obviously on solid ground, put your pot on top. This works as both a pot stand and the stove. The flames come out the side, your water boils, and then you just uh, add it to your food. Ah, there it is. You just pour it in here, it rehydrates, and you're good to go with your meal. So that's all you really need. Now, if you want to do something fancier, like uh, saute up a steak or some sausage, then maybe you want to get into some other realms of possibility. But for just rehydrating food, this is all you need, I promise you. And you'll be good to go, and it costs you nothing. And that weighs a quarter of an ounce for that stove there. I dare you to find a lighter stove system than that. The other thing about alcohol that's nice is... Um, well, we'll see in a little bit, but you can bring exactly how much fuel you need, unlike the canister stove fuel, which you're kind of stuck with, well, whatever's left in the bottle, right? So next thing up though, for efficiency of a stove is always windscreens. Wind really robs the efficiency of a stove. So this right here is like a half ounce and it's just some aluminum flashing that I cut out to the right dimensions. And what happens is it fits perfectly. It's kind of hard to show because I should be on the ground, but say I'm on the ground with my stove right there. It fits perfectly around three quarters, two thirds of it. Cuts off the wind so you can position it in the direction of wherever the prevailing winds are coming from. And that will keep your flame from blowing around and make your fuel get a lot more bang for its buck, basically, if you will. Now, where do you get aluminum flashing? Well, I mean, if you have some scrap around the house, go for it. Even an old soda can might do the trick. But in my case, just go to DutchWareGear.com and he sells this by the foot. It's actually like eight inches. So I had to cut it down. But you can buy this probably the equivalent of less than $1. And you got a windscreen. I have bought windscreens for like 15 bucks foldable ones off of Amazon. That's great. Those are cool and convenient. But honestly, for a dollar, you can make your own or for free. You could probably find some scrap metal and do it yourself. All right. So that's that. Inside here as well, we have a bag of goodies. What do we got? A lighter. That's important. I have two lighters. One is in my cook set all the time. One's in my backpack, which you'll see. I like redundancy. You got some matches. These are waterproof camp matches. I did list these as an expense. Some items like Ziploc bags, I didn't list as an expense because I figured you already have them. But a waterproof match, I figured eh, it's not something everybody has. So for around two bucks, you can get a package of these and they got a little wax on them just to keep them alive if things get wet. But I always keep them in a uh, plastic bag. Uh, little Reflectix thumb protector. Now, what is that? Uh, well, I made it out of some scrap Reflectix. We'll get to that in a second. This is a striker off of a box of matches just as a backup precaution. And then I always carry some spare pieces of tin foil, which can work for cooking on top of a rock or just a lid in case you lose yours as an emergency. And a spare water bottle cap. I have lost water bottle caps before and it sucks. So if you lose one for say said disposable water bottle, well, don't worry, you're back in business. Next up, you don't have to bring this. If I was going minimalist, I can drink out of this as well as heat up water for my backpacking meal. But let's say you're hanging out with friends and you want to both cook water for your meal and simultaneously, I don't know, have a cocktail around camp. Well, same idea, DIY backpacking cup, very lightweight, like under an ounce for sure. This is like probably used to be a can of canned cream corn or green beans. Just 
cut the top off, get an unlined version, and you got a cup. Then, if you want to be real fancy for coffee in the morning or hot chocolate at night, put it in this little cozy, and you are styling. Your hands won't burn, and your drink is going to last, oh, I don't know, this will keep your drink hot for a while. This is like the poor man's Yeti right here. This material right here is the same stuff that you saw around my cook set earlier, right? Because uh, I have one that I made for it as well. And it's called Reflectix. It's also what I made my little pot holder out of. Ultra light pot holder. It goes around like water heaters and whatnot and uh, it insulates things. It's basically bubble wrap with some mylar space blanket kind of material on it you can get a giant roll for 15 bucks i didn't include it in the price analysis for this video because well you really don't need this to start backpacking and honestly you probably don't care if you're first starting but let me tell you after like one or two trips when you start to really nerd out you're gonna you're gonna like this idea i think and uh, you just buy a roll and you can diy make your own gear or insulators for all of your gear if you want to. You can buy uh, tape for it as well. It's like a aluminum kind of reflective tape. And uh, yeah, you can go to town. I have a video on this as well. But anyway, that's pretty cool. So that's my cup. And for like two ounces, a little bit of space, it's kind of worth it. So hey, drink up. Oh, we're down to one item. And that is a pretty important item, right? The sleeping bag. This is the one item I said I hadn't used yet. Everything else is tried and true. But this, honestly, years ago, I bought a cheap synthetic $30 sleeping bag on Amazon. It was bright blue. It's my dog's sleeping bag now, Denali. But this looks way nicer. It's a synthetic mummy bag by a company called Animato. They sent it to me for review. Stuff stack right there. Temperating, they say 40 to 50 degrees. So normally you don't get like a rating range like that, I should say, but they're saying 40 to 50. So me, I sleep with a decent amount of clothing on, so I'm pretty confident I'll get 40 degrees out of this, but stay tuned for my companion video and we'll see what really happens. But synthetic sleeping bag, right? 30 bucks. And I got two of these opposite zippers they zip together for me and my wife to make one big kind of queen size uh sleeping bag but the weight on this now down is always the uh lightest of course but that would be around 200 bucks and we're not going there today right people so the weight of this guy is 44.5 ounces or two and three quarters pounds not the lightest thing in the world sure if you're comparing it to down right but down also is about Oh, at least four times as much, right? Maybe six times as much in terms of cost. You're not gonna find a down bag ever, at least not right now in this lifetime, for $30. So cost-wise, this is great. Quality-wise, looks pretty good. The cool thing about this is elastic straps on the back so that I can put my sleeping pad through it and kind of get it affixed on there so it won't roll around, especially, for this rollout kind of pad. It wants to curl up. That can be a bit of a pain in the you know what. With this, it should keep it affixed to it and keep it from rolling up. Otherwise, it's another reason I would really suggest a pad like this. Again, a little more expensive, but still only around 40 bucks, a Thermarest Z-Lite. It's gonna stay flat once you put it there. But with those elastic bands, I should be able to keep it hooked on there also claims to have a water resistant uh, finish to it. So if I do get a little bit of water on there from precipitation, dew, etc., I should be okay, especially because I'm not gonna be in a tent. I'm gonna be in, well, not in anything. I'm gonna have a tarp, an A-frame over top of me. So technically, or definitely, I will be kind of open air camping with this keeping direct precipitation off of me. Now, if you decide to go the hammock or the tent route, you won't have to worry about that as much, but that is an interesting factor that I will test out on the trail. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to using this. So we'll try that out. I like the color too, kind of subdued olive drab color. That's right up my alley. All right, so moving along, 
You know what I've noticed? I didn't mention it's laying on the ground here, but I also have some paper towel squares that I cut up into like little squares like this big. And I just put them in a Ziploc bag. That's part of my cook kit for cleaning up and whatnot. So it doesn't really cost much weight, but it's a nice peace of mind. And now, all right, so inside of the Scandinavian gear backpack, there is this pouch here that is for a hydration pack, but I just use my water bottles. So I don't use this pouch for that. I use it for storage. In here I have toilet paper, pretty important. A lot of new backpackers will grab an entire roll cost-wise, which is what we're talking about, not the end of the world, but volume and bulk-wise. I mean, unless you have some serious issues going on, I, I, you probably don't need that much toilet paper for a weekend. So just unravel and wrap up whatever you need, put it in a little bag, and you're good to go. Next up, these are wet wipes, okay? Just take a couple wet wipes, put them in a Ziploc bag. Newer backpackers will probably bring the entire pack. I just wanna let you know that an entire pack of hydrated wet wipes can be like a pound to two pounds. So just take what you need. I even prefer to cut them in half. You really don't need to use that much at once, or at least I like to have the ability to choose, you know, just do a little touch up on my face versus like a full body wash. So cut them in half, just bring a few and you're good to go. I've even had somebody suggest, and I haven't tried this yet, but I'm, I want to. They said, just let them sit out and dry out. And then on the trail, they just add a little water and they come back to life and they can use them like a regular wet wipe, but they will weigh basically nothing compared to their wet weight. So that's something I got to try out, but a couple wet wipes. This is my toiletry kit. It's really just a Ziploc bag with, what do we got here? Again, cheap stuff. I did count this as a cost because most people probably, eh, well, they might not have a travel toothbrush already. So travel toothbrush, which for a dollar or so usually comes with travel size toothpaste. In my case, I wear contacts. So I have a little eyedropper bottle with some saline solution. Now, I don't have it here, but uh, another favor of mine for hot weather, I don't do it in cool weather, it's not worth it. I don't bother with deodorant, but for hot weather, you can just take a chapstick tube that is empty, like completely used, get some deodorant, microwave it in the microwave till it liquefies, pour it into the chapstick tube, let it cool, and now you have a chapstick tube that's actually a mini deodorant. Just don't get it confused with uh, your real chapstick. That could be a problem. Other than that, that's about it. I don't really take trips long enough or care enough to worry about like, um, I don't know, like shampoos, conditioners, all that stuff. But if you want, you can get a little travel bottle and bring some soap, you know, if that's what you're into on a longer trip. Next up, uh, okay, kind of aforementioned, right? It's just some generic, it's almost like a paracord kind of line. Paracord's popular, but you don't need to go that route. If you follow my gear list suggestions in the description below, that same guy line that I used for all the tie outs, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but for my tarp, for the four corners and then the two A-frame areas, so six points, I have 12 foot lines coming off. Very easy. And then it came with these little tensioner things, which I'll show in the trip video. But that leaves me with around 27, 25 feet of additional line from a hundred foot pack. So that additional 25-ish feet, I will use as a bear bag line. So all that is, is that 25 foot of rope, a little carabiner, and you just wrap that around, like I said before, your grocery bag or garbage bag and haul it up in the tree to keep the critters away. Now we're down to actually, before I get into the hip belts, another pouch that you can put stuff in. Inside I have my first aid kit. Let's talk about this real quick. I've mentioned it on other videos. I don't get too hardcore with first aid. That's kind of controversial. It's up to you and what your risk tolerance is. But what I do, and I only wrote this up as like five bucks because it's a lot of stuff you already have at home most likely. Some ibuprofen in one of those. An assortment of band-aids and bandages. Some moleskin, which is great for blisters. This right here is a little piece of cardboard with some thread already on a needle wrapped around it. So it's basically a sewing kit, you know? You can sew something up real quick with that. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you can get it done. Next thing right here, this is usually in here as an emergency all the time. This is a fast food spoon. This one happens to be in a little plastic bag, but this actually brings up a good point for a DIY, or I should say a low budget 
budget conscious backpacking, you can buy some fancy spoons. I have one here just as a reminder for me, but it's still probably six or eight bucks. You don't have to do that. You can just get a fast food spoon and that's what I'm going to do for this trip. Spoon, spork, knife, whatever you want. It's free. It's light. I mean, we're talking grams nothing and you don't have to get a specific backpacking spoon now the downside of these is they're pretty short and most of your backpacking food as you saw where's it at is in these big old bags right and they're pretty deep so that is a downside you're gonna it's a little weird to eat out of these with this but even some of the ones you pay for backpacking spoon and spork wise um, have the same problem so when you're on the trail you can just cut this down with a knife and you'll be fine or you just deal with it. But this is really cheap, effective, and lightweight. And then I also have a tea candle. It can provide a little bit of light as well as it's a fire starter. Speaking of fire starters, in here I do have some wet fire tablets, but you know, those are a little pricey. I got them for experimentation. Honestly, Google DIY fire starters and there's a ton of stuff out there. My friend Mike, his favorite thing is very simple. Everybody has this. You get dryer lint out of your dryer, like when you change the filter, right? You take that, you get a candle. Next time you're burning a candle and you pour it over top of the dryer lint, you mush it in, you let it dry. That's a fire starter. Another super simple one with even less work than that. Cotton balls and you just dip them in some Vaseline and then you put them in a separate little baggie. That's a good fire starter put a flame to it, you're good to go. And some little straws that I cut into sections and filled with neosporin and heat sealed it with just a lighter to seal it shut. Some super glue, travel size, just in case this can work to fix your gear as well as uh, if you have a cut that just will not stop bleeding, stitching yourself on the trail isn't great, but a little bit of super glue will actually seal it together pretty nicely. And last but not least, some Benadryl. So that's that, that is my first aid kit. And a couple more important items in this side pocket that I didn't get to. Fuel, of course, for the aforementioned cat can stove. So take a bottle, I mark it very clearly, this is fuel, don't drink me, and I put my fuel in it. About one ounce will do two cups of water, roughly, at a neutral temperature of around 70 degrees, depending on how cold it is. Last item in the side pocket here, this is very important as well, a water filter. You're gonna need a water filter. This is a Catadyne Be Free, separate video on this as well, so I won't go too in depth. This is a 0.6 liter bag for a solo hike. It's just fine, even with you and one other person, I think it's just fine. All you do with this thing to keep it short, you just scoop up some water, Screw that back in because the filter's inside. Flip the top and either drink directly out of it, which is super awesome, or squeeze it right into your Gatorade bottle or whatever you have. Check out my other videos if you want to know more about it, but that thing's super awesome. And that, yep, that kills that. So now we finally go home stretch into these hip pouch or hip pockets, I should say, and then we'll wrap this up, I guess. So first thing I see in here, Little thing of hand sanitizer. I'd say just invest the one time, get a dollar travel size bottle, and then you can refill it in the future with the big old bottle. After chores, bathroom breaks, etc., for you know keeping yourself clean. On top of that, back to fire starting, you can squeeze some of this, kind of same idea, on a stick, let it soak in for a minute, and light it up. It is very flammable and a great fire source. Compass, old school compass, Brunton classic compass. You can get these for around 10 to 15 bucks. Well worth it. I don't care what you're carrying in terms of maps, GPS, cell phones, walkie talkies, satellite phones, have an old school compass to tell you where north is. Here's a knife, uh, look online or more likely in like a gas station or something. You can get like a $5 knife. All you need is something that's basically just gonna open up your mountain house meals, maybe Cut some cloth if you have to repair a piece of clothing with said uh, needle and thread, stuff like that. But for the most part, you're just going to be opening up food containers. So this, even right here, is a little overkill. It's a little big. I usually like something a little smaller, but you can get something like this for like five bucks, like I said, at a flea market, gas station, etc. Have some sort of pocket knife. That's that hip pocket and then the other one last one what do we got light source right i like to keep this on the hip because i want it close to me and it is my headlamp i actually bought this myself 
recently for two reasons. A, I had this budget backpacking video coming up and I wanted to have something that was budget and this is only 15 bucks. On top of that, I'm gonna hand it down to my wife after I do the uh, companion video where I take this on a trip. This one has a 10 lumen mode on two AAAs that will run for in the dozens of hours. I'll pop it up right here. And then it also has a high mode that goes up to 100 and something if you really have to like night hike and look around. But for the most part, I find it's important for a headlamp. Have something with a long run time. Really, anything 5 to 10 lumens is fine for around camp when your eyes are adjusted. Run time is more important unless you plan on night hiking. But that's a little more advanced and I would think you will probably get to that down the road if you've hiked a little more. But for now, you're just thinking about time at camp. So something like this is good. Next up, a secondary lighter. Like I said, I like two, so that's a bit click lighter. This is some sunscreen that I put in a little bottle. You can get a travel size thing of sunscreen for like three bucks, right? Or you probably already have sunscreen. You can buy one of these bottles. I got mine from Dutch Rare Gear, literally 10 cents for this bottle. And it's a 10 mil bottle and I filled it up with sunscreen and I'm good to go. And then bug spray, that's important too, right? Depending where you are, bug spray is going to be a big factor. When I went on my first trip, we brought these big aerosol cans that were like a pound a piece. It's crazy thinking back that we did that. They were like 20% DEET and you like sprayed it on your whole, you like fumigated yourself. Just get yourself 100% DEET. It's very concentrated. You rub it around and the bugs will leave you alone. And that, yep, is the end of the pockets. So we did it. We went through everything in my budget backpacking gear list. Again, under $250 if you're down with doing the tarp sleeping. I know. A newbie out there is probably saying that sounds ridiculous, but I'll be posting a video to see how it goes with this setup. Everything right here on an actual backpacking trip. Otherwise, you can do my tent or hammock camping suggestions. Those will work just fine. And you're still under, what, 350 bucks? Not bad, considering my wife and I probably spent... I don't even want to think about it. But hopefully my experience will help you all out there as well. That pretty much covers it, my budget backpacking gear list. Till next time, I'm Syntax77, and you have fun out there.